welcome to another episode of Disaster Empire Quick Views. This is the podcast where we interview thought leaders and innovators in the field of resilience. I'm Ashley Guzman, and I am thrilled to have Dr. Steve Goldman here with me today um, to talk about business resilience and business continuity, crisis management, and exercising. So thank you so much, Steve, for joining the podcast today. And I'm going to flip it over to you to give a brief bio. Great. Thank you, Ashley. It's great to be here. Um, I can't think of anyone I know who actually majored in business continuity, (laughs) maybe minored in disaster recovery. Yeah. So like everybody else, I came to our profession by some weird path. And mine was through engineering. I actually have two degrees in nuclear engineering. And um, I was out at a power plant doing, you know, startup, you know, real good stuff. And operations at a nuclear plant and someone figured out that unlike most engineers I could put a subject and a predicate in the right order. <laughs> so they said you are going downtown to be a nuclear spokesperson. It's like what? And anyway I went downtown and you know I loved it. I was talking to the news media to all the citizens groups um, writing articles which as an engineer I couldn't really know how to. Uh, it was just great and so that was nuclear emergency communications the nuclear communications which led to nuclear emergency communications, nuclear mm-hmm. emergency planning, corporate mm-hmm. emergency planning, uh, crisis management, crisis leadership, blah, blah, blah. At one time, I was a, um, I am a former global business continuity manager for a, uh, a Silicon Valley high-tech company. Mm-hmm. And I, it was fun because we had offices all over the world, and I got to do all that neat stuff with them, travel like you do extensively. Yeah. It was fun. So it's like everybody else. Here we are, never expecting it, but here we are. Well, thank you for sharing that. And so far, I haven't heard that particularly particular entree right into the profession, but definitely a key one for a lot of folks, right, is is around nuclear power and uh, the importance of planning for worst case scenarios um, in in those types of events. So thank you so much for sharing that and, and your dedication to the field. Hey, before we get started, I do want to talk about MIT's crisis management and business resiliency program that you've got going on. I know a few of the audience members are aware of that. Um, but first, I know that you also consult as well. So could you share a little bit about that? I just want to give you an opportunity to talk about that. And, and then if folks who are interested, I'll make sure to link below so that they can contact you. Um, I know from past conferences that you often offer, uh, you know, great platform and presentation on exercising in particular, but um, I'm sure you have other things going on as well. I have uh, an ex-wife, two cats, and a bartender (laughs) who rely on me for support. So my team pays well, but (laughs) I haven't won a Nobel Prize, so I'm down on this one. Um, but seriously, um, I, I, I enjoy consulting. I like going out, meeting new people, walking into an organization. Now, my, my joke is I walk into an organization, I destroy it, I simulate destroying it, I tell them how to recover, and they pay me. Life is good. <laughs> That's a great way to say it. <laughs> but I really enjoy walking into an organization and just finding, you know, again, the former engineer, finding problems, getting them better. Then when you're doing training, whether for security guard or the CEO, when you're doing training, all of a sudden that light bulb goes off. Like, mm-hmm. I can see that they get it. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes it all worthwhile. Then what I love most is exercises. I love putting people through the um, you know, through the paces. And when I write an exercise, it's detailed. It's not just a matter of the data center is down. I give them reasons why, and I have to go dig into it and everything like that. So uh, that, to me, is, is the best part. Then you do the after-action report, and you know, they keep track of what they have to do. But that, that to me, is the best part. I've got um, Fortune, you know, I've done Fortune 10 companies uh, down to my son's elementary school, huh. planning and exercising. And again, I just, just enjoy it. I just uh, walk, in, uh, walk in, do it, and have a good time. I, I'm very, I get to be more serious when I'm in front of the board of directors and I'll be here. <laughs> but um, still, uh, I, you know, to get the point across, I do a lot of examples in this company to this, what would you do? And, they, they learn a lot, which, again, that's that's my personal satisfaction. Excellent. Well, hey, I also wanted to give you a chance to spotlight MIT's um, advanced business resiliency and crisis management course. Can you share um, with the audience? I know it's been going on for a few years, and I can say that I was honored to be a guest lecturer last year, so thank you so much for that opportunity, um, but really wanted you to be able to share what's it all about and how has the program evolved and why should people 
uh, attend. Well, what I said about, you know, the, the ex-wife bartender <laughs> support. No, seriously. Um, years ago, I, I was at a conference and I just got tired of the vendors. I got tired of that selling, the marketing. I just want to find knowledge. Mm. So I sat down with some friends and I said, you know, if I were to put together a course, this is what I would do. They said, yeah, add this, take it away. And that's how the course evolved. It's, it's mm. strictly education, strictly interacts with, with world-class speakers about what they do and how they do it. And, and you know, a lot of case studies and a lot of like, like fear, like supply chain. I've got one of the world's experts from MIT mm-hmm. on, the, on the staff. And then I have like Penny and Ferris with Jeff Fu to talk about how this all gets implemented. Yeah, great team. Do you remember from last year, you were part of the, uh, how we implemented part of our program. And uh, I, I got to tell you, keep, keep it open this month, uh, next June too. So I'll let you know. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so that's the course. Uh, it's been running for 14 years, I think. Mm-hmm. And we only take 70 people. And that's it. So there's a lot of networking, a lot of individual attention. Each of the speakers, uh, like I've got two news media, two, two news editors come in, and they, I told them, your assignment to tell the class, we're the news media, you have a crisis, mm-hmm. this is what we're going to do to you. And the students get a chance to tell well, is that fair? Like, they laugh, fair, aha. But the students understand mm-hmm. all the different topics, you know, the ins and the outs and, and the details. So uh, so that's really good. And part of it is each of the speakers, they give their, I send the emails of the speakers to all the students. So if you want to talk to the supply chain expert or a leadership expert from Harvard, you've got his email, has her email, go, go for it. Mm-hmm. Then on the last day, we have a simulation where we do, I uh, just make them all choose, um, choose positions. And we do a workplace violence, a chemical spill, and a mm-hmm. cybersecurity attack mm-hmm. all in the morning. Not a real good day at the office, but yeah, no. <laughs> then we hold a press briefing afterwards, and the two news media editors are there. So it gets intense, but to me, it's you know, it's five days of just learning. Mm. And plus, this, since you're based in Boston, we do a duck boat tour. Mm. You know, we go to a um, uh, seafood restaurant. So mm. that's it. I, I personally, not because I developed it, but I think all the feedback we get has always been real positive. So I feel like I'm, you know, it's it's good. Absolutely. I hear so many great things about the course from those folks that have gone through it and the value um, of the experience, the networking, and as you said, the real simulation at the end as a capstone to bring all of that learning together. I think people find it very helpful, whether they're new into the industry or whether they're, you know, looking to plus it as my favorite Walt Disney term um, and or to, you know, make things better. Um, for their own programs. So thank you so much for all of your dedication and your team's work on that. So again, I'll make sure to to link that. But hey, I want to ask you a question that I ask all of my guests, which is how do you define resilience? Because it is such a buzzword, right, in the industry right now. And, and lots of people are debating. Um, so I think the more that we can all share how we're viewing it, I think the more we'll come to consensus over time. Okay, well, you're asking either the right or the wrong person because <laughs> Engineer. So mm-hmm. technically, resilience is when a material resumes its shape after being uh, deformed. Mm-hmm. All right. So that mm-hmm. comes right back. Uh, less technically, it's the ability of a material to resist degradation or deterioration under extreme pressure. Mm-hmm. That leads perfectly into the business resiliency, which is an organization is hit by extreme pressure, a, a disaster, a crisis, or whatever, can it adapt? And can it return to either business as usual or business as modified? And people need, uh, they should understand, you may never get back to business as normal. Look at, look at the pandemic. A lot of us are never going back to the way it was in yeah. 2019. That's fine. We have a new model, a new way of doing business. Let's go. We've adapted. So that's resilience. If something bends, you bring it back to where it should be or where it ought to be. And I think that's such a great point. And people, I think, for the first time have really learned that, right, across the globe, that resiliency and also that point you made of that new normal or that next normal, that to expect things to go back to exactly the way they were before an event is just not as we know what happens. 
Um, so for the first time ever, I'm hearing board members across the board, senior executives, academics, you know, researchers, all talking about resilience, business continuity, crisis management in a way that I think it's opened the door for all of us in the industry in a way that we just did not have before. So unfortunately, nothing like a disaster, right, <laughs> to provide that opportunity. But it's really been a, a fortunate one, I think, for all of us in the field. Yeah, it's sad that it takes a crisis to get recognition for all of us, but that's the nature of our business. Yeah. Well, hey, I think you also um, work for Harvard School of Public Health, HSPH. Is that is that correct? Yeah, that little liberal yeah. arts school. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can you I've share? Been work, I've been working with them since the mid '80s. Okay. Um, and just I'm just adjunct faculty. I just do a few courses a, uh, yep. a few sessions a year. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But I do, uh, they have a radiological emergency planning course. I teach crisis communications. Excellent. And with the news editor from um, uh, Boston area, we do a, you know, I'm going to do this to you. Here's how you respond to it. And then we do an exercise uh, for a nuclear plan uh, because that, again, it's a nuclear engineering class. Yeah. So uh, we do that. And also there's an environmental health and safety course I teach risk and leadership Excellent. communication. So it's good. We, you know, again, we joke about the Harvard MIT rivalry. Yeah. But, um, it's all good. It's all. Yeah, good. you're keeping yourself busy, but but yeah, <laughs> just just a little bit. But you know, honestly, the other thing that I've been seeing is that escalation and the importance of risk as we're looking at it across the continuum with resilience, right? So in business continuity, crisis management, you know, we have been dealing with the end stage, right, of things mm -hmm. happening, but I've been seeing that integration of risk. So that risk control, thinking about controls, thinking about, you know, the beginning side of how things could escalate is really coming to the fore in the industry as well. So I'm watching that trend. And we also have HSPH in common. Years ago, I actually worked there in their giving program before I did all of this kind of work. So really remember the school fondly and my time yeah. there. So yeah. thank you. And I know the students are so dedicated um, in the work that they do. And uh, we need more of those, you know, public health professionals coming out of the school. This so thank you for that and, and your your work in helping to educate them. Well, hey, um, you've been in the industry for a while and you've worn various hats, but you know, I think it really gives you a great perspective in looking at the longevity and the evolution over time. Can you share with the audience what you're seeing as, you know, the challenges, what you maybe were observing during COVID, during the response, and then how you think those learnings may impact the industry and, and all of us going forward? I see, I always see the great corporate awareness of, uh, of being prepared. What I, what I don't like in a couple organizations is like, well, we beat that one, let's move on. Mm, don't have yeah. to think about it again, like wrong, it's going to come again, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And the astute crisis planner, the astute business resiliency person, takes advantage of that, if you will. Mm. It says, okay, we, we've had the pandemic. Now, what about cybersecurity? That's the next one. And what about, you know, the, right now I'm doing a lot of cybersecurity plans and exercises and sadly workplace violence plans and exercises. And, um, and one thing that people, I, I try to impart, let's, let's phrase it that way, is one, a crisis is never one crisis. Mm. A workplace violence event covers HR, finance, operations, people, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just someone coming in and shooting something. It's uh, cybersecurity, if you think about it, if a cyber attack takes down the organization's entire network, it's an entire organization problem, not just IT. And I've seen too many IT drills where it's or too many cybersecurity drills where it's only IT. Mm. They don't think about the bigger scope, like, hey, yep. that department's <laughs> gone, that department's gone. Yep. And, and, and one company actually hired, and to my IT friends out there, I like you. My sister's one, so give me a little... <laughs> little thing here, but a little break, but IT people are not the best communicator. Mm. And I've seen companies, IT departments go and hire PR companies to do the work without letting the company itself know that they did that. Mm. So that's going to be a whole other crisis in addition to the ransomware. And so when I walk in and I see these types of drills, 
It's like, no, no, no. The, uh, I look at the plans and proceeds like that. Nah, this isn't going to work. This is how it's going to do it. We did a drill, and the CIO said, I don't believe it was a ransomware. They had, mm-hmm. they had an hour to make the payment. Otherwise, the system was gone. And the CAO actually said, I don't see a need to tell the CEO or the board about this. Wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? I mean, even some of the IT people said, mm, I don't think that's right. Yeah. But this is, again, why you do drills and exercise. But these are the next things exactly. that we need to think about. That's not going away. Sadly, uh, you know, probably no better than I do. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a business. It's the way these businesses are run to do this. It's, it's their model, business model. They're not going away soon. It's too easy for them to make money. So, again, kind of meandering, but, you know, that's the point is these are the disasters we need to think about after COVID. So you've got COVID, now let's move on to the next one. But a couple of years now, run a COVID drill, see how it works. Yeah. See if people have actually learned things. Yeah. And thank you for those points. Definitely seeing that positivity bias, right? Because we dealt with X, we're yeah. ready for anything. Right, right. Um, and I know CEOs are definitely thinking about, right, the, the cyber <laughs> security threats. So I think they want to know <laughs> if ransomware occurs in their organization, definitely. And I mm-hmm. liked your point, too, about the communication across the organization. That's always been the biggest challenge, I think, no matter where you sit, whether you're public, private, government, et cetera. The communication piece, I think, is always the most challenging, right? Not the crap, oh, so to speak. and and uh, continues to be, but I think really a good wake-up call for IT organizations out there to really be working in and digging deep in connections with the business, with employees in general, when these events happen. So I'm so glad that you're there and helping them to understand that more fully. Hey, before we wrap up today, and I could keep talking to you all night, um, but hey, is there anything that you wanted to share with the audience that we didn't get a chance to touch on today? Thanks. Um, When you look through plans and procedures, exercises and whatnot, and you're talking with senior management, please understand hope is not a strategy. Mm. We hope this is going to work. Assumptions are a huge risk. Mm. And if you want to risk your organization because you hope the plans and procedures are going to work, you're doomed. So my, my big thing is, you know, exercise to detail what goes on. Uh, a, a brief second, I do ransomware drills at our hospitals. And when the IT system goes down, so do all the systems monitoring the patients. Yeah. And in one hospital, we, uh, they show me what would happen. IT went down, ransomware, you got 48 hours to pay. The monitors on people in the emergency room went blank. They would go blank if we didn't find this out. Like, all these people think they're going to die. So this is one of those consequences. Again, a crisis is never one crisis, it's many. And I want people to think about it. So again, hoping... Hope is not a strategy. Assumptions are a risk. That's kind of what I would say. Definitely great points. And I've heard of a few bad actors pledging not to target, right, the industry and healthcare and hospitals particularly. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, not all of them, right, are that noble. And uh, they'll take opportunities. And I think that's, you know, a great point that I always try to dive home. It doesn't matter what your industry is or how big your company is whether small or large, they're all at risk, right, from cyber attacks and cyber criminals because it is a crime of opportunity. Um, So I think that's something that I see across the board that, you know, a lot of smaller businesses are like, nope, it's never going to happen to us. And even larger organizations, right, thinking outside the box, they're prepared for ransomware, but maybe not. they're not prepared for, you know, a third, fourth party vendor, going down or the natural disasters that could kick out, you know, now our, our, um, you know, uh, risk, right, from power mm-hmm. outages and network outages because people are working more remotely or hybrid um, has increased. So Absolutely. really great point. So I'm sure you're going to be bringing out all those aspects in your exercise and going oh, I forward. Do. I do. I look for consequences of the consequences. And a lot of people just don't dig that deeply, but yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. Gray swans, black swans, snow leopards, <laughs> <laughs> all of those of aspects, right? <laughs> well, hey, it's been so great to talk to you. How can people get a hold of you if they would like to connect with you further? Um, well, I guess, can you publish my email, goldmans at mit.edu? All right. Uh, yeah, goldmans at mit.edu. Great. Glad and I know talk. you're on LinkedIn as well. So, <laughs> yeah, you're on LinkedIn as well. So I'll connect sure. people to you there. 
Social media is not my strong suit, so it's there. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, Good to know. But thank you so much for coming on the podcast you, today. Yeah. Really appreciate it. It's been great to talk to you, and I'm sure we'll connect soon. Absolutely. Take care. Yeah.